Hey. Also, it is currently almost 80 degrees. <laughs> uh, one of the person living in Southern California, and it being January. Um, probably February by the time you're seeing this, but, you know. Uh, welcome to the life of me. Um, hi, my name is Megan, and welcome to the last video in this series. I am so excited that it's the last one. I mean, yes and no, because it's sad that it's over uh, in some senses, but I want to kind of give you what's going to happen. So like I've mentioned in previous, um, I'm going to call them episodes, but in previous videos in this series that I was getting sent to a specialist and, um kind of what was going to happen, was going to be determined at that appointment. So due to a lot of factors in the conversation, so one, this is my last year, my parents' health insurance, because that is really important to understand. And also because my plan is to go to film school in the fall, hopefully. I cross our fingers and hope I get in. Um, that was odd. That was an odd saying, but we're going to go with it. And I just kind of, well, me and the surgeon kind of made a decision that ultimately let's go in, clear everything out, and figure out a hormonal option that makes sense for me, the most sense for me. And then, you know, hopefully that will tide me over, like that hopefully that will fix the problem temporarily. Um, well, I mean, ultimately, there is no cure for endometriosis. Like, I'm always going to have to have surgeries. But hopefully, for the next little while, and I can get through film school. And, and he is very assuring. He's very reassured that I can get through the next two years. Because I can talk about my grad program that I'm currently in for a million years. Because that was, it was a really rough experience for a lot of reasons. Um... But one of them was because my health was just so rocky. It, it took a lot longer. Also, the program itself was not designed for someone like me. I had a lot of just issues with the faculty. Um, by them telling me that I was too sick to be in the program. And all of that. A variety of things that should have never happened. But here we are. So that was kind of the decision. It makes me a little bit nervous because I was hope like obviously I live in LA County, so COVID numbers are pretty high. So I can't exactly have surgery right now. And ideally it would have been in February so I could still take comprehensive exams for my program. I'm still trying to figure out how that's going to work, but just since I don't have a surgery date, I'm kind of just like waiting it out. Um and hopefully the numbers improve here in LA County and we I don't know, it happened sooner, but that was kind of the decision was to go in, have a second surgery, remove all of it, um, and we'll see what happens. The things that I found out at that appointment were a little interesting. So what nobody told me was that my fallopian tubes and ovaries are filled with endometriosis because my first concern is, not to say not my first concern, because obviously my first concern is just like my overall health, but my second concern really is fertility in the future. And I could talk about this in a separate video if you want, but for me, having a biological child is just not really something where I'm at. Um, since I was about 18, that was never really my option. I always wanted to still carry a baby, whether being, you know, LBGT and being bisexual, like if I marry a female, it's a little different and I could do reciprocal IVF. But if I marry a man, we could do egg donation or embryo adoption, any number of things. And so that's kind of always my first concern um, when it comes to like anything in my ovary related reproductive system. And one thing that got brought up was that I most likely have adamiosis, andamiosis, something like that. The sister to endometriosis where, I will put the name here because I honestly don't know how to say it, but it's a sister to endometriosis where your tissue starts to grow inside of your uterus. 
um, because I have really, really, like, I still, my pain was a lot better, which I talked about last week, um, but I still have really heavy blood clots, and he thinks that it's just due to that, and the one thing that will help is hormonal treatments, which kind of brings me to the next point. We went over kind of what the options are. I want to talk to my OB here, but it's so hard to get an appointment. Literally, everyone's pregnant. Like, everyone's pregnant. It's so hard to get an appointment. Like, if I try to schedule, it'll be in March. So, I might have to call them and see if I can get one earlier. Um, I need to discuss it with her a little bit more because one of my main concerns with most types of birth control... So, the pill, just not going to work for me. Trying to take something daily at a specific time just does not work for me. Like, it does not work for my lifestyle. It just not going to happen. So that's kind of out of the question. I've also had a lot of issues with birth control pills. So for me, that's not really my option and not the thing I'm going to go through. Anytime I'm on birth control, my anxiety gets super high. So it's always been put to me this way. Being on something like hormonal birth control, even like the Nuvering, my birth control, or when I was on the Nuvering, it wasn't terrible, but that was a wrong type of birth control uh, for me, which we now know in hindsight, but whatever, because I need a progesterone only type birth control with endometriosis. So I basically kind of, the pill is kind of out of my question. And then we have the Depo shot, and then we have the next one on, and then we have an IUD or kind of like the next three options. So then it kind of goes to the depot isn't really, I've had a lot, I've heard a lot of horror stories and that's just really not something I want to go through. Um, and then the, the next one on, which is the implant in your arm, also not really something I want to do. The main reasons for those two things are because like hormonal birth control pills, it goes through your whole body. And that makes my anxiety really high. Cause like I said, the, when I was on the new brain, wasn't that big of a deal. So for me, those kind of, a would make my anxiety really bad and I don't really want to deal with that while I'm still in school. Second um, issue is that they both can, they cause weight gain. And again, at this point in my life, I have a whole video dedicated to weight loss. I've lost 90 pounds, um, a little over that. And I'm, I'm still trying to lose weight, but just not at the current moment. I'm trying to maintain my weight. It's not working out for me very well. Um, I'm still losing weight. So, which is, I'm doing a whole video on that, but actually probably by the time you're seeing this, you probably have already seen that, but I am not really at a place in my life where I want a side effect, a huge side effect being weight gain. Like I did not spend the last year of my life trying to lose weight just to gain it back by being on a hormonal birth control. Um, I don't really need it for birth control stakes at this point in my life, so it's not really that big of a deal, but I want to kind of fully discuss it with my OBGYN here because one, she's going to be the one that's dealing with whatever we decide to do because I'm not going to LA every single time I need to deal with, you know, hormonal birth control. So my option and really something I want to discuss with her is an IUD and that has always, 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 always always scared me. I've never wanted an IUD, but honestly, if it's going to happen, it's going to be placed when I'm put under because I'm not dealing with that pain. Like I can't, I literally can't use a tampon. So I'm not entirely sure how you would you get an IUD in. So, and honestly it would have to be done during surgery anyway, because if like it would have to be taken out during surgery, then put a new one in and blah, blah, blah. Not for me. And from why my understanding from conversations I've had previously about birth control is that it's super fo like focused, so it doesn't cause anxiety like a birth control pill or something like a depo shot or an explant on kind of vibe. And to be honest, I don't really need it for birth control at this point in my life, so I'm not really too concerned about that. But you know, maybe you know, I start dating someone, maybe that's a concern. But as of right now, don't have that. I just want to make sure that whatever we're doing will last until I want to have a baby um, because I don't really want to be having surgeries every two to three years. Not really my jam. I want to make sure that my growth of endometriosis is as low as it can be and as controlled as it can be. The other thing, the second thing that got brought up too is diet. So obviously if you've been following me a while, I've been vegan for about six years now. And I am perfectly fine. I love being vegan. I would not change 
a single thing about it. It is one of those things that I'm super used to it. At this point, I am going to talk a whole video that's probably already out about diet and my diet. But for me at this point, he did say he's like being vegan is the best case scenario for someone with endometriosis. It probably has grown a lot less. So I am happy to hear that because, you know, it just reaffirms what I kind of already knew. So I am super, super grateful for that. But it is like one of those things where like, you're like, okay, but I don't know. I, I was like, thank you. Like, thank you for saying that. But like, cool. Um... So I guess this video is kind of all over. I'm sorry about that. But there's just a lot of things that have to kind of be said to close out this series. I think I will always kind of update you on my endometriosis journey. It will always be in this playlist. I'll always update you. Um, and I think the next video in this playlist, but it's not going to be a series, will be the next surgery. Like we're covering everything. I'll probably just do like couple days before surgery and like recovery um, and maybe do like another six month update but at this point this is kind of ending this series because I was not anticipating having another surgery when I had the first surgery I wasn't really anticipating me having endometriosis at all so let alone having to have another surgery um I did really like the doctor I saw which I was really happy about I have a lot of um I have a lot of trust issues with doctors. I have been thrown around a lot over the years and been told really crappy things. And I am very grateful that this doctor listened. He did his homework. I really like my whole thing is I don't really like male doctors. And I really don't like to see doctors that I've never seen before. And then on top of it being in a facility I've never been at kind of stressed me out yesterday. Uh, I should have filmed it because it was literally me just like freaking out all day. I just am not someone who likes to do that but I also you know I also understand that I had to so I sucked it up and we dealt with it so I just kind of want to say that and I think he's a really good doctor you know he gave me my options of just doing a hormonal treatment for now and then in a year reevaluating surgery which doesn't work for me because a I'm going to be in school and so I don't I like I'm kind of at a point where I don't want to go through what I went through in this program in my next program. I want my next program, that program is for me. Being in film school is something I've always wanted but never taken the jump to do because it always scared me. I was always like, that's not going to like do well for me. And like, I just have learned a lot since being diagnosed with CFS and now endometriosis about me. And it's like, I just have to do what feels right and I have to do what's me and, and how I want to live my life. So I want to get through that program not dealing with what I was dealing with <laughs> in my previous in the previous program so for me it seems like the best case scenario to remove as much as I can be put on hormonal birth control and reevaluate in a few years and I think that's okay I think I'm okay with that at this point in my life so um that's kind of what's going to happen next I I really want to talk to my doctor and see what's you know what her solution is or her, her suggestions are because I really trust her and I just want to know everything and honestly trying to like go to Santa Monica from Long Beach which is like kind of a long drive I don't really want to be dealing with that <laughs> constantly so I want her to be the point person for that so um I want to talk to her and see what she has to say but everyone apparently is pregnant right now and it's really hard to get an appointment but I will figure that out and Hopefully, I mean, my initial thought is an IUD, but, you know, we'll see. We'll wait and see what happens in the neck, you know, with that. And, you know, I'll update you, of course, um, with that decision when I go in for my next surgery. Um, it's scary to be putting on, be put under now a third time in less than a year, but I also have to do what feels right, and that feels right. And at this point, you know, I... I know that's a lot and it sucks, but at the end of the day, like that feels right for me. And I think the thing is, is that closing out this series, I hope that A, you've learned something and maybe you don't feel so alone because I, I know the feeling. I felt really alone for a very long time in what I was feeling. And I hope you know that you're justified. If you have pain, find a doctor that will listen to you. Um, and I hope that you understand that you you have the power and you know what feels right for you. And if surgery doesn't feel right for you, then don't do it. If 
you know, going for second surgery feels right for you, then do it. I, I hope that if anything that can te this can teach you that. And I don't know, it's just, it's been crazy. It's been a crazy wild ride. Um, and I hope that everybody enjoyed this series as much as I did. I love, I, it's nice to be able to look back where my headspace was at just a little over a month ago. Um, cause it was definitely in a different headspace <laughs> for sure. I uh, did not think I was going to have endometriosis at all. So let alone being in stage three, but, um, I can't believe this is over. Um, I can't believe the series is over, but of course there'll be more in this playlist for you guys as, you know, as time goes on. Um, yeah, that's it. I'll see you guys next time. Love you guys. Bye.